Diana, it sounds like a radical idea. What do you think about it? Well, castration has nothing to do with the problem. The problem is not in their penis, it's in their head. And pedophiles do not choose to do what they do. It's what they are. Uh, okay, it may be what they are, but they still have to act on it, wouldn't you say? Yes, they have no choice. It's like you uh, seeing a nice-looking man and, and getting a familiar feeling. They can't help it. They see a child and the same feeling. Uh, they get the same feeling. Hmm. All right, Diana, thanks for your call. Deneen in Georgia. Deneen, what do you think about this, about castrating pedophiles? Well, as sad as it remains to be, uh, castration isn't an effective treatment for pedophiles or rapists either. There have been a multitude of tests done. Some performed in hospitals for the criminally insane where the subject received painful shocks when a picture of a young person made him respond. And psychologically, short of a lobotomy, not much can change what stimulates a person. All right, Janine, thanks for your call. We've got a call from Missouri as well. Jerry, what do you think? Well, being the foster adopted mother of several children, eight exactly, that have been molested and raped, mm -hmm. and I think that and not only should they be castrated, but they should either have their hands and arms removed so that they can no longer harm a child. Trying to pick up the pieces after this has been done has been a nightmare. These children live with this for the rest of their life. All right, so Jerry supports castration and taking it even a few steps further than that. Thanks for all of our calls. We got some emails, too, because people really really wanted to get in on this question. This is what Dana wrote. I think that every pedophile of any age should be castrated no matter what the age of their victim because this particular lawmaker was talking about the victims being 12 and younger. If the pedophile has nothing left to scar his victim with, he probably won't do it again. JM in New York says this, castrating people for crimes against people under 12 doesn't protect enough people. Anyone who rapes anyone else should be castrated regardless of age. Just like anyone found guilty of murder should lose a hand. Jail time is just a slap on the wrist. Wow. All right, let's got some texts as well. Callie agrees with the measure. Yes, please castrate them. I would love to see this bill law be passed. It might actually create an incentive to com not commit crime. And uh, Deb from Minnesota sent us this text. I think it should be a law that if you commit a crime against a child, any crime, it should be automatically life in prison. So a lot of support. What's the first thing you think of when you hear the term pedophile? A man, of course. No one ever thinks of a female when the topic of pedophile is discussed. All of the women in the video you just watched were discussing the castration of male pedophiles. I wonder if they would have the same opinion about castration if they knew just how prevalent female pedophilia was. Over the past four decades, our corrupt and deceitful, corporate-owned, mainstream media in cooperation with feminist and women's groups have very effectively conditioned the public with propaganda with respect to how we view men. The only women who know the truth about female sexual predators are the mothers of the male children who have been sexually molested by a female predator. Remember that for every video clip you see about a female committing a sex-related crime, there's a hundred news articles for which a video of a female predator was never made. This documentary dispels the belief that only men are capable of sexual exploitation of children. It was a sex scandal that rocked the valley, the local Mormon church, the community. The story of Susan Brock, wife of Maricopa County Supervisor Fulton Brock. She was a mom in her 40s, sexually abusing a 14-year-old boy. Her daughter accused of abusing the same boy. So what happened to that boy who seems to have disappeared from his Chandler community? Linda Williams has the story. 14, the age of skateboards, school books, Friday night lights, high school football. But for one teenage boy, the victim of Susan Brock, it was an adolescence interrupted, or some would say stolen. Now 17, that teenager Brock molested has left Arizona. He left in January to attend a specialized program out of state. He's in a school out of state right now that, that specializes in dealing with um, 
children who, who have problems, in particular children who are the victims of, of sexual abuse. Tim Eckstein is the teen's attorney. He says the young man has dealt with, continues to deal with, serious issues stemming from the abuse. Absolutely. Um, you know, trauma in, in all kinds of ways. He says part of the challenge for the teen is some people don't view him as a victim. Eckstein has heard that firsthand from people. Who have said things, you know, to the extent of uh, how is he a victim, how is he harmed. I should have been so lucky when, when I was a teenager. You know, remarks from, from men that um, clearly don't appreciate the, the gravity of the situation. Scottsdale clinical psychologist Aaron Nelson. Absolutely, there is a stereotype that this is the luckiest guy in the world which Dr. Nelson says makes it even more confusing for the victim. Our sort of social stereotype is that this should be something he's happy about. When he's not, because he's a victim of sexual assault, um, that adds another layer of confusion. What's wrong with me? Why do I feel this is awful? In April, Susan Brock is back in court after agreeing to a plea deal. We indirectly hear from her victim in a letter Eckstein reads to the court. The boy says in part, Susan's abuse has caused me to miss so much of life. He says I am in an inescapable depression. During that same hearing, a shocking scenario unfolds of an older woman, a family friend of the boy's family, 48-year-old Susan Brock, the wife of Maricopa County Supervisor Fulton Brock. Evidence presented that she targeted and groomed the boy for sexual abuse from the time he was 11 years old. Susan would often give this boy back and, and shoulder rubs um, after having sort of brought him lunch. In court, the evidence stacked up on a table. Some of the gifts Brock had given the teen. A stereo, cell phone, video games, paintball equipment, expensive t-shirts. The sexual relationship began when he was 14 years old and lasted three years until Brock was arrested in October of last year. By that time, she was even arranging sexual trysts for the boy and his girlfriend. Then, in December, another bomb drops in an already explosive case. As the sort of the case unfolded even further, the, the arrest of, of Rachel Brock even added to the, the level of, of stress and anxiety. Rachel Brock, the 21-year-old daughter of Susan, was arrested and charged with seven counts of sexual conduct with a minor. That minor, the same teenage boy her mother was accused of molesting. The crude jokes may have escalated in some circles, but the damage could be profound for any teenage boy, says Dr. Nelson. With how they view themselves and women, certainly, uh, in, in cases like this where there's a female offender, um, trust of women and of uh, authority to be sure can be severely interrupted. I would like to publicly apologize to the victim and his family for the pain that I've inflicted on them. Brock sentenced to 13 years in prison. Her daughter Rachel, now 22, remains behind bars facing counts of sexual conduct with a minor. As for their victim. There's no way I think, you know, he would say that, that he's okay at this point. Um, like I said, I mean, I, it, it's with every person, the reaction is going to be different, the treatment is going to be different, the care is going to be different, and you just sort of take it on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis. Eckstein says his client is focusing on healing now. He expects to finish high school and then go on to college. The abuse marred his teenage years, but those around him are doing all they can to make sure it doesn't ruin the rest of his life. Do you want to kill me? Do you want to get me in trouble? In 2004, former Boynton Beach music teacher Carol Flanagan was heard over the phone admitting to a 19-month affair with a fifth grader. Do you think it was right that I was saying? I don't know what's right in this world. I mean, in this world, yes, it was not right. And, um, but when you love somebody... For the first time publicly, we hear the recorded conversation as 49-year-old Flanagan professes her love to the student she started having sex with when he was 11 years old. I don't know why it happened. I don't know why I love you so much. And I love you so very, very, very much. I love you so much that I would die for you. I loved you. And... 
you, you love me, and I tried to fight my feelings for you. Can you remember that I love you, and please be strong. I love you so much. Okay. 44-year-old Tracy Allison is jailed on $25,000 bond. Police say a 17-year-old boy's mother alerted them to the alleged inappropriate relationship. Investigators haven't released many details, but do say Allison and the boy have allegedly been involved for the last two and a half years. 33-year-old social studies teacher Shannon Best was led away from Sanderson High School Monday in handcuffs. Investigators say Best had sex with a female student. A 31-year-old woman is behind bars tonight after authorities say she had sex with a 14-year-old boy. Goldsboro police arrested Betty Sue Blizzard and charged her with one count of statutory rape and one count of statutory sexual offense. She agreed with his description of what happened in December last year and January this year. She fondled one teen outside his clothes. She sent nude cell phone pictures of herself to another, and she had sex with a third and sent him nude cell phone pictures. The judge sentenced Bauman to three years in prison, followed by three years on probation. She must surrender her teaching certificate and register as a sex offender for life. In a written statement, the prosecutor said Bauman's sentence was just, and he hopes the case sends a message that adults having sexual contact with children will be aggressively prosecuted. 62-year-old Barbara Brooks is charged with an unthinkable crime, raping two children she was babysitting. These court documents give us a few more details about the alleged criminal deed. The complaint says the victims, a boy between the age of 7 and 9, and a girl between the age of 12 and 15. The alleged crimes happened between the year 2000 and 2003. Brooks was also serving as a foster parent at the time. A woman from Winslow accused of sexually abusing a 14-year-old boy pleaded not guilty today. 31-year-old Melissa Buxton was arrested earlier this month. She is charged with two counts of sexual abuse of a minor. Investigators were tipped off about it by Buxton's husband after responding to a fight outside of their home. Most of the alleged sexual assaults took place here at Cardinal's home, but it was a family member of the victim who first called police. The matter first came to the attention of investigators in Iowa and then was brought to the attention of uh, Fond du Lac County Sheriff's Department. The student told investigators the first incident happened December 8th of 2011. The complaint details at least six alleged sexual encounters. In court today, prosecutors also said Cardinal's two-year-old child was present at the home during one of the alleged incidents. One incident occurred when Cardinal allegedly traveled to Iowa to have sex with the student. 27-year-old Victoria Chacon was arrested this morning. She used to teach at Somerset Junior High School. This has all been under investigation since March when the boy's mother found love letters from the teacher. Seven teenagers say they were raped by a Tipton County teacher. Eleven kids say she gave them alcohol. A grand jury indicted Crestview Middle School reading teacher Cindy Clifton on Monday. Well, the arrest affidavit spells out in explicit detail what is said to have happened. In it, two of the five alleged victims say they repeatedly had sex with their teacher. It kind of spread really fast. Samantha Rhodes says it's been the talk of Kennedale High School since last week. Rumors that English teacher Brittany Collops was having sex with students. What was she thinking? And then he sentenced her. Andrea Connors admits she had sex with a student. And when it came time to explain it to the judge. I would like to say how sincerely sorry I am. I would like to say how woman was in court today accused of the rape and sodomy of a 14-year-old boy. 30-year-old Jenny Counselor was arrested last week. In court today, she waived her right to a probable cause hearing, which means her case will go directly to a grand jury. Counselor is charged with third-degree rape and first-degree sodomy. A special education teacher charged with sexual abuse faced the judge tonight, Wendy Dagnault. In Gilderland Town Court, police tell us charges stem from an incident back in July. They say that is when Dagnault allegedly inappropriately touched a 14-year-old girl at the girl's Gilderland home. 
we did find the student in her bedroom taking a nap on her bed. They weren't engaged in sexual activity at the time. However, our investigation did reveal and confirm that they were engaged in a sexual relationship. Detectives say the two were having sex for seven months. That 30-year-old Ardia Davis met the teenager at her old job at Hamilton Distance School, a school catering to students with behavioral and emotional disabilities, according to the website. Linda Davis was escorted out of the Attorney General's office this morning in handcuffs, charged with two counts of child rape, criminal sexual contact, kidnapping, and eight counts of sexual exploitation of a child. She then took a trip into the Metro Detention Center. Investigators say Davis is behind an especially disturbing crime that unfolded at an apartment in northeast Albuquerque. In September of 2007, investigators say they found pictures of a four-year-old girl being sexually assaulted. Investigators say Linda Davis was at the home when they carried out the warrant, but denied any involvement. However, investigators say the evidence in the home eventually helped lead them to the child, and now to evidence against Davis. Here are the facts first. 37-year-old Stephanie Dickinson was arrested yesterday for internet luring of a child. It's a class 4 felony. And Dickinson is one of five board members with Ellicott School District 22 in eastern El Paso County. She's currently the board's treasurer. 29-year-old Dorothy Dixon of Noonan. Channel 2's Emanuel Bajorquez is in Coweta County with what else he uncovered in the case. She's currently charged with one count of child molestation. A well, South Georgia woman is behind bars now, charged with child molestation. Thomas County investigators arrested and charged 20-year-old Jasmine Edwards with child molestation, aggravated sexual battery, and enticing a child for indecent purposes. Authorities say they received a complaint back in 2008 about Edwards molesting a child under 13. The investigation lasted several months, and investigators say she confessed to the molestation last week. Authorities say the sexual contact took place at Foss's residence in Farmington. When the child told the family member about the alleged assaults, Farmington police launched their investigation. Uh, what's being alleged is there's two counts of aggravated felonious sexual assaults, uh, one count of felonious sexual assault, a witness tampering, and a false imprisonment is what's being alleged. Carolyn, 40-year-old Michelle Farley is a teacher at Bora High School and mother of two. And prosecutors say at least twice in the last five months, she had sexual relations with a 17-year-old male student. Prosecutors say earlier this week, the teenage victim told an undisclosed person about the relationship. Brandy Michelle Fuller turned 30 this year, and last week she was charged with having sex with a boy who was 12 at the time. Well, Bob, uh, Sandy, police say 41-year-old Jamie Lynn Greenwood was arrested on five counts of suspicion of unlawful sex with a minor, a 16-year-old boy in this case. A probable cause statement that was filed with the jail says she began a sexual relationship with the boy last March when he was 15 and that it continued on until January. Now, police say in the document that the boy was a friend of the family and even though he was a student at Eastmont Middle School where she managed the lunchroom, Police tell us they do not believe the relationship started there. Now, police say the boy had been threatened to keep the relationship going. They say that in this charging or in this probable cause statement filed at the jail. And they also allege in this statement that there were hundreds of dollars in gifts given to this boy as well in exchange for sexual favors. Arrested Wednesday morning, police say 42-year-old Shannon Herkert, a special needs teacher at Martha Lane Collins High School, was having sexual encounters with two teenage students. The 15-year-old girl claims she and Klemanski exchanged several text messages. The suspect asked for a picture of the teen without clothes, told the victim she loved her and wanted to marry her, then engaged in phone sex. Eventually, the teen alleges she flew to Waco and had sexual relations on three separate occasions. We're told the staff member, 27-year-old Brittany Larson, who allegedly had sex with a 16-year-old student here, is married and pregnant. That, along with the fact that the Glenholm School is for special needs students, has people who know Larson shaking their head in disgust. 27-year-old Brittany Larson, seen here in her 2001 New Milford High School yearbook photo, arrested by state police, now facing serious felony charges. 
A substitute teacher accused of molesting an eighth grader is going to jail for a year. 47-year-old Diane Leach of Stu Bend pleaded no contest to two counts of gross sexual assault in February. She was sentenced today in Machaya Superior Court. Leach was a substitute teacher at the Ellen Lewis School in Stu Bend when she had a four-month-long relationship, sexually, with a student that began in December 2010. In an effort to protect the victim, the prosecution decided to agree for a plea deal for six months behind bars. 26-year-old Nicole Letcher is accused of having sex with a 16-year-old from December through May of this year. She was arrested last month and charged with six counts of sex abuse. Documents obtained by Fox8.com show 25-year-old Mary Schnell of Aurora entered the written plea of guilt last week in a Portage County Common Pleas Court. Prosecutors there proved that Schnell had sexual contact with a 16-year-old Aurora High School student on at least two occasions. Fox 19 was the only one there Tuesday afternoon, rolling exclusively as Schuler left jail. She sent the board her letter of resignation this week. Schuler is accused of having sexual relations with five Mason High School students off school grounds. She's facing 16 counts of sexual battery and three counts of providing alcohol to minors. Tuesday, Schuler, while shackled and wearing an inmate jumpsuit, learned her immediate fate. A judge ruling Schuler must wear an electronic monitoring device, must stay away from those under under 18 years old and all high school students. She must have no contact with the alleged victims and is not permitted to consume alcohol or drugs. Parents with children in the district couldn't agree more. An elementary school counselor has been arrested accused of sending a teenage boy nude pictures of herself. Our Paul Venema reports the allegations have sent shockwaves through the Judson Independent School District. The district says there is only one way to describe the reaction here to the charges. These allegations are, are serious and, and shocking. The allegations, 43-year-old Cynthia Stewart, a counselor at Olympia Elementary School, had used her cell phone to send nude pictures of herself to a 15-year-old boy. Former Lauder Hill Middle School teacher Kristen Sullivan has been released on $75,000 bond after being arrested Monday for having sex with her 14-year-old former student. 36-year-old Amy Sword said she slept with her 16-year-old son that she had put up for adoption at birth after looking him up on Facebook. A Farmington woman has been sentenced to four years in prison for raping a disabled 13-year-old boy. 35-year-old Mandy Thibodeau was arrested nearly a year ago. She pleaded guilty to gross sexual assault in June. Authorities say the boy was the son of a longtime friend of Thibodeau's. Deborah Tipton recorded a 12-year-old exposing herself. Investigators also found Tipton made two tapes. And a South Valley teacher is under arrest tonight. Visalia police say 27-year-old Leanne Trout recently had several sexual encounters with a 16-year-old student. Mike, the 33-year-old teacher, told police she had sex with her student twice. The graphic details are spelled out in this criminal complaint. 33-year-old Christy Sanchez Trujillo was fired and arrested yesterday. Sanchez Trujillo told police she picked up the student from his home twice in the past week. Both times they went to the movies and then headed out to Albuquerque's Petroglyph National Monument. They began hugging and kissing, which led to intercourse. A mobile woman is charged with rape after allegedly having sex with a 14-year-old boy. Jennifer Troll was booked into Mobile County Jail Thursday. She bonded out the same day. Local 15's Tammy Bray spoke with the mother of the child involved in the case. Tammy, a horrifying charge for any parent to hear. Absolutely, Kim. The family contacted us because they say they don't want it to happen to any other children. And adding to the story, the woman's father is currently spending life in prison for similar crimes. On Thursday, Jennifer Michelle Woods Truel was booked into Mobile County Jail. The charge, second degree rape. A Rock Hill mother cannot believe a woman she invited into her home to babysit her children is accused of fondling one of them. Now to a disturbing story out of California. A mother of three was arrested for allegedly having sexual relationships with at least two underage boys on her child's hockey team. Vacaville summer camp leaders accused of having unlawful sexual intercourse with a 14-year-old boy in her program. 
23-year-old Abby Shosick is in prison tonight for lack of bail. Prosecutors say the former band teacher in Danville planned early morning rendezvous with a student of hers, and the relationship became public due to messages on the social networking site Facebook. They say a young female teacher tried to get young female students to engage in sexual activity, and they say that behavior lasted most of last school year. The teacher was 31 years old when she kidnapped and raped her student, a 10-year-old boy. She never said she didn't sleep with students, just not the underage ones. And it made me sick to my stomach. It made me sick. For a few years now, the case against Coffeyville teacher Sharon Rutherford kept Clark County in the news. I just try to move on past this, try to get this out of my mind. Cedric Cummings was one of Rutherford's students. He's now 21 and describes why the affair ended. We was going together or whatever, and then after a long period of time, she wanted me to kill her husband. She wanted me to kill her husband. Yeah, sunny, hi, and boy, I say Sunny really said it. This woman obviously didn't want to get caught, but discretion, not the better part of, part of valor here. If it's true, police say she had sex with a student in the closet of her classroom. Pretty unbelievable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and uh, when they started investigating, she took off to Colorado, but that's where they eventually arrested her. 28-year-old Casey Wilson was an English teacher at Osceola High School, but cops say back in October of last year, she was doing much more in the storage closet of her classroom. Beth Ann Winchester was arrested today for sexual assault. Police got a tip back in February that Winchester was having sex with boys ranging in age from 15 to 17. This is no yearbook picture. It's a mugshot. Leavenworth County prosecutors allege high school teacher Shannon Young was having sex with a male student. Statistically, the majority of sexual abuse perpetrators are men. Far too often, though, communities overlook the reality that many sexual abuse cases involve women as the offender. This past year alone, the Western Slope Center for Children identified 27 female perpetrators who came through their offices. Love News reporter Matt Vandergrew joining us live in the studio with more on this taboo trend. Matt. Yeah, it's a disturbing yet real problem in Mesa County and all over the world, really. Many don't associate women as sexual abuse predators. But the truth is that women are just as capable of the crime. Alleged crimes like the ones Dianeth Pittman are facing often go unnoticed. It's a worldwide epidemic, sexual abuse. But what about when the offender is a woman? It's just unimaginable. And so that's probably why it's overlooked in many ways. A woman's role is definitely a nurturer, a mother, someone that takes care of children. But not all fit the stereotype of a maternal figure. Zen says recognizing that is key. We need to get past that as a result of being able to protect our children. Zen says female perps can mask their sexual abuse in a number of ways one might not expect. When they're bathing a child, when they're comforting a child, um, or possibly when they're dressing a child. Zen offers one piece of advice to parents. Believe your child. Because the scars of sexual abuse can last a lifetime. An Applington Parkersburg high school teacher turned herself in today on sexual exploitation charges. Officials say 24-year-old Ashley Anderson admitted to having sex with four students this past school year. Students ranged in age from 16 to 18. Accused of having sex with an underage boy. Tanya Andrews charged with two counts of lewd and lascivious behavior against a victim between the ages of 12 and 16. Deputies in Lee County making the arrest after they say she had sex with the boy multiple times at his Lee County home. A 32-year-old Pekin woman is being held in the Tazewell County Jail tonight, charged with having a sexual relationship with a teenage boy. Maria Bialetto was charged with aggravated criminal sexual assault of a victim between the ages of 13 to 17. Lisa Byron had a clean record until now. The Manchester attorney was arrested in October, charged with possessing images of child sexual abuse. Just before a scheduled court hearing on those charges in Manchester District Court Friday, the FBI took her into custody and drove her away in this white sedan, delivering her to the U.S. District Court in Concord. The U.S. attorney says those sex abuse images involve a teen girl Byron allegedly offered up for sex on the website Craigslist.
Blumenshine is accused of sexual abuse of a minor. Plainfield police doing rounds at this Kohl's store checked out a car in a dark, secluded part of the lot. That's when they say they found the 27-year-old woman with a partially undressed 16-year-old boy, a student where she teaches. Officers tell us both made statements indicating they'd had sex there. You might question Casey Kano as a daycare worker after reading her rap sheet. In 2008, she was arrested in Riesel for allegedly using a sexual device with a child. She was charged for two counts of sexual assault to a child under the age of 14. A 24-year-old woman admits she had sex with a teenage boy, and now she's in jail. Cajila Cardenas was arrested yesterday up in Kerrville. Police say it was back in April when they ate the 15-year-old boy snuck out of his house here, got a ride to Cardenas' home, and then the two had sex. We've learned that Cardenas has been arrested before on a number of different charges. A mom facing charges for allegedly molesting a 15-year-old. Cops say there could be more victims. Another shocker in this case. Police say the crime happened in a public place. New at 10, Laura Cole is in Wheatland asking questions about what happened. This is where investigators say one of the incidents took place at a local restaurant hangout. And now the suspect is facing some serious charges. Antoinette Clark. A 38-year-old mother who investigators say got herself in trouble by what she did inside Bill's place, Wheatland's restaurant and bar. Earlier this year, the police chief says Clark molested a 15-year-old inside the restaurant's bathroom. We're a very small community, uh, so these uh, a lot of rumors go around town, and we want to get to it as quickly as we can and get the facts out. He says it all started after Clark and the teen started talking outside Bill's place, then went inside together, along with some of the boy's friends. And investigators say he may not be the only victim. The chief says she may have also had an inappropriate relationship with a 17-year-old. We are pretty confident we're going to seek a complaint with the district attorney on the 17-year-old. Female teacher's aide is facing charges tonight. What police say she did involving several children has shocked parents at that school. During her initial appearance in court, the judge laid out the long list of charges. Okay, ma'am, you've been arrested for sexual abuse, which is a felony three, sexual conduct with a minor, which is a felony two, and furnishing obscene material to minors, which is a felony four. According to court paperwork, Gabriella Compton had sex with a 14-year-old student inside her van. She supposedly told another 13-year-old student she'd have sex with him on his birthday at the end of March. She's accused of sending out dirty text messages to the students. A topless pic of the teacher was allegedly sent to the 14-year-old and eventually forwarded to numerous kids in the school. Investigators say she admitted to everything. 42-year-old Gabriela Cortez was arrested yesterday for allegedly having sexual relationships with two male students. A former teacher accused of getting elementary school girls to dress up in their underwear to take pictures of them has now been arrested by police. This is Kimberly Crane. She lives in Shawnee. Officers found her at her house today. As a matter of fact, we have video of the arrest that just happened moments ago. We can tell you the FBI is involved in this investigation. This is her walking right out of her house. The McLeod School District put Crane on administrative leave last week. She stepped down earlier this week as an instructor. So we're going to continue to follow this story. Once again, this video just coming into our newsroom from Shawnee. Kimberly Crane arrested in this case. Uh, once again, accused of getting small girls, uh, elementary school aged, to dress up in their underwear and take pictures of them. A former teacher, already in trouble for allegedly having sex with a student, is back in the news again tonight for filing, allegedly, a false police report. On February 6th, a call about a violent home invasion brought more than 20 officers to this Riverton home. Now, two weeks later, police say there was no home invasion. DeLuca has been charged with making a false report, and this isn't the first time. Two years ago, police got another call from DeLuca claiming that two men broke into her home and attacked her. That report coming after charges that uh, she had had sex with a student. Moments after pleading guilty to sending nude photos of herself to a 15-year-old student, Melinda Dennehy offered an apology. I'm truly sorry for my actions and poor judgment. I wish the student and his family well. Dennehy was a 10th grade English teacher at Londonderry High School earlier this year when she sent the photos to the teen. According to court papers, she also told the teen she wanted to perform a sex act on him. 
in court. Dennehy also apologized to the school district and said she is looking to put this behind her. I plan to continue with counseling and treatment and will endeavor to lead a productive life. The indecent exposure charge that Dennehy pled guilty to is a misdemeanor. As part of the plea agreement, she had to give up her teaching certificate. Erica DiPaolo was charged today with having sexual relations with a 15-year-old male student she taught in her honors English class. Tanya Earle turned herself into police and she's charged now with nine counts of sex abuse. Detectives say the victim was a minor when this abuse happened. They're not saying when or where it happened, just that it was before 2011. Inside the home, Amy Farrell accused of having sex with a 15-year-old boy. She was 38 when police say it started and, according to neighbors, wasn't trying to hide it. 34-year-old Juanita Fisher was arrested on Friday and charged with seven felonies, including child molesting and incest. Prosecutors say she had sex with a male relative when he was about 10 years old and forced that same boy to engage in sexual acts with a female relative who was about the same age right in front of her. 32-year-old Mandy Flynn is accused of having sex with a 17-year-old special needs student. 51-year-old Laura Foss faces several charges that include two counts of aggravated felonious sexual assault with an alleged victim who police say was 11 years old. Todd Zeman and Galleria was served a summons to appear before a judge today after Power County prosecutors say she was involved in lewd conduct with a minor. 23-year-old Galleria was charged with felony sexual battery after investigation revealed she was having an inappropriate relationship with a 17-year-old male student. Prosecutors say she was a teacher's aide for the American Falls School District when she began texting a student. The relationship was said to have developed into something physical. A mother says a friend of the family was having sex with her 15-year-old son. That woman is now behind bars. 28-year-old Kathy Gardner of Newport was arrested this morning in charge of statutory rape of a 15-year-old, which is a felony. And this teacher worked at a private Christian school in Jupiter when she admitted texting this to a 14-year-old student. I want to rip all your clothes off and have sex with you to the point of ecstasy. Geneva Henry was arrested and charged with lewd and lascivious conduct. She agreed to a plea deal and avoided jail time. A place where people come to get help. But police say what a Prestera therapist in Boone County was doing behind closed doors can only be described one way. Shocking. This is... Shocking, because that, that, that is not what Prestera is like. Boone County deputies say two teenage boys told them their therapist, Tressie Hayes, took them on drug runs, snorted pain pills with them. One even says they did the drugs in her office. It violates the census in, in all kinds of different ways. But police say what happened inside her home in Julian is even more disturbing. She's accused of having sex with one of her patients even letting her 13-year-old daughter have sex with the same boy. The other teenager says he watched. 36-year-old Carol Ann Hope stood beside her lawyer in this Horry County courtroom Thursday afternoon. State law enforcement division officers say Hope had sexual relations with a 14-year-old male student in her Hartsville home. A teacher in our state has pled guilty to molesting a 12-year-old boy. 38-year-old Jennifer Iannuzzi was sentenced Friday, according to the Citizen Times of Asheville. The paper reports the former substitute teacher will spend 90 days in jail and have to serve three years probation and do 50 hours of community service. 35-year-old Amy Jackson had sexual relations with a 14-year-old boy. The charges against her include aggravated child molestation and statutory rape. With her head down, 29-year-old Jennifer Sawa Smith turned herself into authorities. The Steel Valley High School teacher is facing 11 criminal counts related to sending nude photos of herself to underage male students. Her attorney wouldn't elaborate on her defense. In terms of talking about what the potential defense is, it is premature for me to talk about it at this point in time. But the complaint does elaborate. It says Smith sent nude photos of herself to five male students, two who are 16 or under. It also says two of them sent her nude photos of themselves. Police say the conversations all started on Facebook messaging, but quickly moved to cell phone texting. The complaint says, quote, 
Smith told John Doe number one that she wanted to perform oral sex on him after school in her class, and she wanted to have sex with him over her desk in her classroom. Smith reportedly told a 16-year-old when talking about sex, you're trying to persuade me, Mr. Student. Police say he replied, a little, I mean, I can stop. Smith allegedly said, you're cool, you're cool. Then, so keep persuading you if you want. The judge set an unsecured bond under the conditions she have no computer or cell phone use, nor talk to the victims or their families. City school teacher Claudia Tillery is charged with raping a boy, allegedly plying him with drugs and alcohol. Shanice Lambert, a Childress Independent School District paraprofessional, turned herself into the Armstrong County Jail today. She was charged with sexual assault of a child and with having an inappropriate relationship with a student. It is with great sadness that we must inform you that a female teacher at Clifton High School has been arrested. Reading, writing, and hands-on sex ed were part of the lesson plan at Clifton High School as 26-year-old history teacher Kristen Leone is arrested for having sex with her 16-year-old student. Lone Tree Police have arrested a woman who they suspect sexually assaulted a child she was babysitting. A report was filed with police on August 31st. Detectives interviewed the alleged victim and the suspect, 22-year-old Chantella Lucero, on Tuesday. They arrested Lucero and booked her on charges of sexual assault on a child and sexual assault by one in a position of trust. 28-year-old Elena Martin pled guilty to lewd conduct. She had sex with a young man in her car this past fall, and Martin and the teenager then drove to Tacoma, where she was arrested. Elementary school teacher is accused of having sexual relations with a 14-year-old former student. Pinal County Sheriff's deputies arrested this woman, 26-year-old Andrea Martinez, yesterday. They say she was pulled off the road in an SUV, allegedly performing sexual acts with a 14-year-old former student. All right, this is disgusting. Police near Boston say a teacher jumped in the sack with a boy and did it, literally, more than 300 times. And she's married. Here she is. Let's get a picture of her. Christine McCallum, 29. She's accused of luring the boy when he was 13, boozing him up with jello shots, rum, vodka, and then having sex with him. Uh, sometimes police say this happened right under the husband's nose. He's sleeping upstairs. She's getting it on with the 13-year-old kid downstairs. They told police that Nixon, a chemistry teacher at Van Buren High, had admitted to them she'd had sex with a male high school student and was resigning as a teacher. Van Buren police brought in Nixon for questioning on Wednesday and say that she was very cooperative. She did touch the two-year-old in a sexual way. Police say Pierce confessed to assaulting the child on five different occasions inside the girl's dentist's home. Police were notified after the little girl's mother noticed abrasions and had the child examined. 28-year-old Eliana Ramirez pled not guilty in court today. She's charged with attempted lewd conduct with a child, assault with a deadly weapon, criminal threats, false imprisonment, and two counts of annoying or molesting a child under the age of 18. Terry Rhodes is behind bars as parents across the district wonder why she was allowed to keep working. Yeah, it's kind of curious in this whole thing because it all sort of depends on who you talk to. There are clearly communication issues between the sheriff's office and the Fort Bend Independent School District here. The district says it was only aware of the inappropriate texting issue, and it now seems that this was much worse. And as late as this morning, the sheriff said that it believed that the suspect in this case wasn't actually in a teaching position, and she was. Members of an O'Fallon, Illinois Boy Scout troop are being asked if one of their leaders ever tried to sexually assault them. This after a leader was charged with criminal sexual assault of a 15-year-old Boy Scout. News Channel 5's Mike Owens reports from the Information Center that the 39-year-old Boy Scout volunteer is facing mandatory prison time for the crime. Mike? Mike, authorities in St. Clair County say the boy's parents caught Wendy Rogers in their son's bedroom Sunday afternoon. The parents held her for police. Tears are clearly visible on Rogers' cheeks after she was arrested by St. Clair County Sheriff's deputies at the alleged victim's home near Lebanon. Rogers lives in O'Fallon, is married and has two children, and has volunteered with Boy Scout Troop 35 for about three years. Right now, Spear is facing multiple felony counts for sexual assault. Again, she is expected to turn herself in here to the Saline County Jail first thing tomorrow morning.
Sheila Nicole Nikki Sumner was a special education teacher at Warren East. Police say she was having a sexual relationship with a 17-year-old student. A former youth minister is accused of having sexual contact with a teenage boy. 36-year-old Jacqueline Taylor is charged with sexual battery by an authority figure. Also this evening, an Orange County mom is charged with having sex with her son's friend, and he's only 12 years old. A local school bus driver is in big trouble tonight. She's accused of having sex with a student. Another teen is getting credit for telling police. Action News' Kristen Sell is live on the action camp tonight in Putnam County. Kristen, police say this happened more than once. That's right, Mark. According to police, that 17-year-old student, a student here at Palaka High School, fessed up, admitting he had sex with this bus driver multiple times. It's a story that has her community and her family pretty upset. The teacher was arrested for a total of five counts, which refer to five separate sexual encounters with the student. Three of these were at the school, inside the school building, after school hours, uh, when few people are around. Uh, one of the incidents occurred off campus uh, in the city of War Acres. The other incident, another incident occurred in the city of Oklahoma City. A 29-year-old teacher from Riverview is in jail tonight. She's accused of having sexual contact with a 12-year-old boy. GBI agents arrested 22-year-old Holly Whitfield, who lives in Swainsboro. They say she's a paraprofessional at RiverQuest in Burke County. The GBI says she was having a sexual relationship with a 15-year-old student there. For Scythe County deputies arrested 32-year-old Amy Yarbrough yesterday. The Atkins High School English teacher is charged with seven felony counts of sexual activity with a student and three felony counts of taking indecent liberties with a student. And to talk about these recent cases involving teachers and students, once again, I'm joined by clinical psychologist Alan Lippman. All right, we're looking at these women. Right. They are gorgeous. Are we mm -hmm. just not seeing the other teachers who are playing? Is it just that we're fascinated by why someone who looks like that, a, a living Barbie doll, would need to have sex with a young kid? Well, now that's a very interesting thing to say, Contessa, a living Barbie doll, because it really puts a finger on the way that we view sexuality in this culture that it's kind of all on the outside and it's not really a criticism because there's so many forces in our society that make us look at it this way look underneath the barbie doll skin of every man and every woman is as we know a kind of a complicated and often conflicting sexuality all of us get different kinds of message about uh, sex in our families and our communities in our media that it's often difficult to assimilate and make sense of and what happens with these women whether they have a barbie doll front or something less we might say I'm curious. It, it is that contessa they don't develop sexually in the same way that many other women do so inside they're still very young sexually even though on the outside they may look very poised and even beautiful and do you think that when you're talking about the long long-term impact of a relationship between a male teenager and a teacher or any older woman do they seek out older women instead of people their own age do you think that any of the uh, beginning sparks lie with the teenager they do, but only in a very kind of simplistic sense. So let's take the case of a 13-year-old boy who views the teacher as attractive and perhaps is trying to prove to his friends that he can win her, as uh, seems to have been the case initially with Villy. Well, the teacher should be in the position of recognizing that this is a young man who is just testing his early notions of nascent sexuality and should recognize that she's in a different place. She's the responsible adult with a fiduciary responsibility to not respond to those sexual advances. This is where we come full circle, Contessa, and recognize that it's the women's psychological vulnerability, their own adolescent sexual status inside their own minds that makes them vulnerable to victimizing these boys in these situations. Mm. Clinical psychologist Alan Littman, thank you so much for sharing your insight today. You're welcome, Contessa. According to the criminal complaint, Janini confessed to the Archdiocese of Milwaukee 11 years ago to having sex with both boys on numerous occasions at St. Patrick's Church and School in Milwaukee. But the admissions weren't reported to police until the accusers reported it themselves last year. And now they're waiting to hear whether she'll cut a plea deal. 
Syracuse police have arrested a woman for allegedly having sex with teenage boys. Officers say Kimberly Arago sent inappropriate text and picture messages to boys ages 15 to 17. When police investigated, they found out she was also having sex with them. They put her in jail last week and she's now been released. Following a three-month investigation, Bouchard is charged with second-degree sexual assault, two counts of risk of injury to a child, and illegal purchase of liquor, according to court documents. She faces similar charges in a nearby town for assaulting a 14-year-old there, possibly the same boy. She actually admitted to having full sexual intercourse with this student in her car in the school parking lot. And police say after the phys ed teacher confessed, 26-year-old Beth Ann Chester was charged with child sexual assault, corruption of minors, and endangering welfare of children, eight counts altogether. He says stemming from a relationship she had with a 14-year-old student. Natasha Coleman is charged with having sex with a 15-year-old boy, a boy who the 23-year-old lived with inside this Elizabeth City apartment. She was my very close friend. Sean Jordan woke up Sunday morning the day after his 19th birthday. He says it was then he learned Coleman had had sex with his little brother twice inside the home while the rest of the family slept. The English teacher now charged with rape and city school officials saying she was already in hot water before this. Investigators say she picked up the 16-year-old in Queens and drove him to the Capri Motel in Lynbrook late at night. Prosecutors telling us they have videotape evidence, but won't say who shot it or how they got the tape. Detectives say it happened in March, and once the teen's mother got wind of the alleged rape, she immediately called Nassau police. Driscoll has been a teacher at Campus Magnet High School in Queens since 2006. But the DOE says she was pulled out of the classroom back in May for another investigation. Those details still unclear tonight. Have you ever noticed that when a woman is either accused or convicted of a crime, she always has a mob of female supporters following her around? I want you to take a look at the following clip. A New York City school teacher from Bayshore will be sentenced to probation after admitting Tuesday to having sexual relations with a 16-year-old male student a year ago, according to prosecutors. Tara Driscoll, 33, pleaded guilty to sexual misconduct. She will give up her teacher's license and be required to register as a sex offender. The, was the presence of an alleged videotape uh, one of the reasons you decided to Absolutely plead? Not. <laughs> was there a videotape? You have to ask the young man involved. And what do, you, do, you, do you like anything to say to the young man? No. Driscoll, who taught at the Queen's School the boy attended, surrendered to detectives on August 5th. She was charged with performing a criminal sex act and third-degree rape. New York's age of consent is 17. Did you notice this woman here? As they're walking, this woman immediately jumps in front of the other two women, one of them, the woman who was convicted, and pushes this male news reporter out of the way. Okay. Now, could you imagine if this was a male defendant or a male convicted sex offender and he was being surrounded by male supporters and a female news reporter came up to get an interview and one of the males pushes her out of the way? I don't think you would ever see that. I know I haven't. But this happens all the time with these females like her being aggressive and just pushing people around. It was the presence of an alleged videotape uh, one of the reasons you decided to Absolutely plead? Not. <laughs> was there a videotape? You have to ask the young man involved. West Bend police say an anonymous tip led them to 31-year-old Jamie Foss, who's now accused of sexually assaulting a boy half her age.
Renee Frank started sobbing as soon as she entered the courtroom. Then, as she stood before the judge, she grimaced no bond at this time. when she heard she won't be getting out of jail soon. Frank, a former substitute teacher at Charles Drew High School, is in big trouble and pregnant with twins. She's accused of having sex with a 17-year-old student in her math class. A student police say is the father of the twins. Haywood High School girls softball coach Shonda Frank sits behind bars for sexual battery against a student. A former LaRue County High School teacher arrested today, accused of sexual contact with students. A state police spokesperson says 33-year-old Natalie Gentry is facing one count of sex abuse in the first degree. A 42-year-old woman is behind bars tonight, charged with going after young girls on the Internet. Zanita Ham was arrested Sunday night after deputies responded to a domestic call. Now, according to reports, Ham and her husband were arguing after he found messages on her phone and fake MySpace and Facebook, Facebook accounts. She was allegedly using the accounts to speak sexually to young girls. This morning, Judge Elaine Walker sentenced 58-year-old Jean Alexander Harding on a charge of improper relationship between educator and student. Hardy had worked as a secretary in the registrar's office at Memorial High School in Port Arthur. Sardis police allegedly caught Hart in a car in a local neighborhood, acting inappropriately with the 14-year-old boy. And they had reason to believe that uh, there was a possible sexual relationship that was ongoing between Miss Hart and the high school student. 30-year-old Kristen Hayes is facing several charges, including rape. The sheriff tells us Hayes met the student while she worked at the Bosey School in Marcellus for children with emotional and behavioral issues. The teacher is facing serious charges tonight. She is accused of having sex with one of her students. Jonathan Betts joins us live with that story. Jonathan? Well, Shelly, Rochelle Heenan is now out of jail. Police say she had a months-long affair with one of her teenage students. Rochelle Heenan's Facebook page is like most mothers, with photos of her husband of 10 years and two young children. Yet the 34-year-old high school teacher now faces criminal charges, accused of seducing an 18-year-old student. Katie Hightower is wanted for second-degree rape and furnishing alcohol to a minor. Deputies charged 22-year-old Sarah Holmes with having a relationship with a 17-year-old male student. Holmes is a first-year English teacher at North Pitt High School. Deputies say the relationship lasted for three months. 42-year-old Christine Hubbs is under arrest and facing 67 counts of sexual assault. ABC 7's Tomas Roman is live in Livermore, where police just wrapped up a news conference. Tomas? That's right, Alan. Police just wrapped up this news conference just a few minutes ago. Regarding the sexual assaults that go back to 2008, we want to show you a, t a photo of the suspect. She is 42-year-old Christine Shreve Hubbs. She's being held on $4.3 million bail, charged with 67 counts of sexual assaults on a minor. 41-year-old Shannon Hurley is facing charges of unlawful sexual contact with a minor and contributing to the unruliness or delinquency of a minor. According to the indictment filed in Medina County Common Pleas on August 27th, the woman supplied two teen boys with alcohol while they were staying the night at her house. A Michigan mother who was accused of luring a local teen to an Amherst parking lot to have sex is headed to prison. 35-year-old Angie Jenkins got a seven and a quarter year sentence today for receipt of child pornography. Prosecutors say she posed as a younger woman on the World of Warcraft video game and then exchanged nude pictures with the 16-year-old before coming here for the sexual encounter. A woman has received a 25-year prison sentence for having sex with a 13-year-old. Natalie Johnson of Dieball pleaded guilty in February to her sexual relationship with the teenage boy. Court documents showed more than 1,500 calls and text messages between Natalie Johnson and the child. Vallejo police believe the relationship between Ms. Killings and the student dates back to 2009, and they're investigating whether or not the English teacher had other such relationships with other students as well. A St. Louis County mother who admitted selling another woman's daughter for sex got the maximum sentence today. 
Mandy sobs from the convicted sex trafficker when the judge ordered her into immediate federal custody. And a relative of the woman convicted ran out of the courtroom hyperventilating loudly. Then on the victim's side, the young victim's mother repeated much of what she's told Fox 2 in the past, that her teen daughter may never recover from both the physical and emotional wounds. As we previously revealed in the Fox files, the victim struggled to get services and counseling to repair the scars of being a sex slave. The teenager had to leave the state to get the care she needs. We attempted to talk to the woman convicted, Latasha McFarland, at her North St. Louis, her North County home, where she pled, before she pled guilty. She shut the door while her young daughter peered outside her front window. Pedroli is also suing Backpage.com for aiding and abetting in child sex trafficking. Backpage insists it does try to eliminate illegal... Posts. In today's case, the federal judge sentenced Latasha McFarland to the maximum prison time under the conviction for prostitution, which is five years. She did not get more than that because the charge for trafficking a minor was dropped in the plea deal. The victim went to Chicago for treatment. She recently ran away from rehab and is now missing. Former Holyoke teacher who ran off with a 15-year-old student is back in trouble. Lisa Lavoie was on probation and under a no-contact order with a teenager, but police say that she was found with him recently. That teenager is now 18 and was found hiding in Lavoie's closet during a random probation home visit. He reportedly told police that he should be able to pursue a relationship with Lavoie since he's now a legal adult. The two ran off together three years ago, sparking a multi-state search. Yesterday, a judge ordered her held on $25,000 bail. Lancaster City police say 36-year-old Christina Laser of Mannheim Township, a teacher at Reynolds Middle School, kissed and fondled a 13-year-old boy. If convicted, Jamie Lish could spend 15 years to life in prison. This week, prosecutors charge Lish with first-degree felony rape after an investigation that began late last year. Police say 32-year-old Holly Lopez, a special education teacher at Lexington Middle School, had an improper relationship with a 14-year-old student. There's a love letter written to a student by a Palm Beach County High School reading teacher. Your lips are so sexy. I love to look at them and play with them. Of course, I love to kiss them. That should go without saying. I would think that teacher has a problem. The teacher later resigned. Her state teaching license was eventually revoked. 26-year-old Leanne Macklin, former drama teacher at Weaver Academy in Greensboro, turned herself into authorities today after five warrants were issued for her arrest. Authorities say the student was 17 years old and that the first alleged incident occurred in December of 2006. A former Canandaigua school teacher begins a jail sentence tonight for crimes related to a sexual encounter with a student in a classroom last year. Marla Gorecki Haskins will serve 45 days. But as 13 Wham Sean Carroll explains, there is more to this sentence. Do you wish to say anything? Canandaigua police accused Marla Gorecki Haskins of engaging in a sex act with a 17-year-old student in her classroom and during school hours. She also faced charges for sending sexually explicit text messages to two students. In September, she accepted an Alford plea that does not require her to admit she did anything. So it's a plea of convenience. We don't need to accept responsibility for it. We acknowledged what the prosecution's case would show, meaning what the victim would say when he got on the stand, but other than that, we don't need to accept responsibility. The plea to two misdemeanors, official misconduct and endangering the welfare of a child, also avoids her having to register as a sex offender. Martinez is behind bars here at the Bear County Jail. I'm told she resigned yesterday after being questioned by Northside ISD police, and then they arrested her. The student and her mother came to the front office of the school at Stevenson Middle School. And told the principal about the improper relationship with the math teacher. 30-year-old Nora Martinez is the teacher accused and charged with indecency with a child and improper relationship between an educator and student. Police say a 31-year-old woman posed as a boy on MySpace to lure a teen girl into a sexual relationship. Roy, police officers arrested Alexa Mirabal on five counts of unlawful sexual conduct with a 16-year-old. Fox 13's Erica Vaughn is in the Web Center, and Erica, police say there is more than one victim. 
Yes, Bob, they tell us that there are two known victims. Both girls are 16 years old. Police say the first victim was abused for about two years. The second victim, police say that Maribel knew this girl. It was her co-worker's daughter, but then she got online, pretended to be a teenage boy, and started this relationship over the Internet. For a year, she had the opportunity to know her both ways. As a 31-year-old friend of her mother's, and as a six, 17, 18-year-old boyfriend on the Internet. Police say the online affair went on for a year with 31-year-old Alexa Mirabal posing as a teenage boy named Alex. Officers say Mirabal even pretended to be a boy during phone calls to the 16-year-old girl, eventually revealing she's a 31-year-old woman, not a teenage boy. That's when police say the online teen romance turned into sexual abuse. Kentucky State Police arrested 38-year-old Amy Knowles this afternoon and charged her with one count of first-degree sexual abuse. This Cleveland school teacher is under investigation, accused of having sex with one of her students. 40-year-old Kristen Ross is charged with unlawful sexual conduct with a minor and corruption of a minor. Janine Sion teaches social studies at Archbishop Chappelle High School. Jefferson Parish deputy says she bought alcohol for a female student and then had sexual contact with the student. It's not clear if the female student attends Chappelle High. After investigators say they observed images of child pornography being shared over the Internet. Now agents with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement Computer Crime Center say their investigation revealed the images were transmitted from 36-year-old Angela Shalito's home in O'Brien. FDLE is an active member of the three Internet Crimes Against Child's Children Task Force in Florida. Now Florida agents and investigators with the Suwannee County Sheriff's Office arrested Shalito yesterday. She is charged with 11 counts of possession of child pornography, a third Third degree felony and 36 counts of distribution of child pornography, a second degree felony. Eric, 25 year old Kimberly Sinclair is in the Cleveland jail tonight. She is charged with sexual assault of a child, and investigators tell us that child is a 15 year old at Cleveland ISD Middle School. Now, investigators say they were notified of the relationship that Sinclair was allegedly having on October 12th. Sinclair said she would come make a statement to police the following day, but police say she never showed up. At that point, an arrest warrant was filed, and Sinclair was. Was taken into custody today. Joanne Stevens was taken into custody Thursday afternoon after a four month long investigation. Police say it started after a phone call from Child Protective Services. According to the affidavit, police say Stevens and the young man exchanged calls and texts on a phone Stevens gave him. And police say at least one time the two had intercourse. This is video of Michelle Taylor walking into the courtroom today. The trial began with opening statements. Prosecuting attorney Chen says Michelle Taylor sent text messages where she allegedly admitted to having sex with her student in the Kmart parking lot. This is 40-year-old Linda Diane Tipton. She's behind bars charged with aggravated statutory rape. This is awful. This is awful. Abriana Miller says the 16-year-old victim told her about the alleged crime. I feel bad for him because that happened. A shocking rape case out of Decatur. It's where a 33-year-old mother of three is accused of nine counts of rape against two boys not even old enough to drive. We begin tonight with a mother back behind bars. Her bond revoked following a hearing in Cleveland County today. The woman is already facing charges for allegedly molesting a 13-year-old boy today. The 37-year-old was back in court answering to allegations that she's had more contact with that teen. Linda, the woman was not supposed to have contact with anyone younger than 18 while she waits for her trial. But a teenage girl told a judge today not only is Amy Blose in contact with kids, she's asked them to deliver a love note to her alleged victim. She walked in on her own, sat in court for a while, and walked out in handcuffs. We would say we're happy but it's not exactly a happy time for anybody. Friends of the alleged victim's parents say this is a victory, but a small one compared to the battle they say they'll be facing for years. We could say we won, but what did we really win? Because all these kids are still going to have to deal with this. We're still going to be, you know, still ongoing. 
Amy Bloss was out on bond, waiting for her trial for charges of having sex with a 13-year-old boy. She wasn't supposed to be in contact with anyone younger than 18, but these parents say that wasn't happening. In court today, a 15-year-old girl talked about Bloss picking her and other kids up for school. The teen says Bloss stopped at Sonic on the way, wrote a love note on a breakfast burrito wrapper, and asked the young woman to deliver it to the alleged victim. I think that shows her bad judgment continually. This is not the first um, contact, I should say, that she has had or tried to have with the alleged victim. It's just the one that we could catch. The district attorney asked for her bond to be revoked and that she stay behind bars. The 24-year-old is a volunteer assistant coach for the boys' varsity basketball team at Seneca Valley High School. She's been charged with having a sexual relationship with a 15-year-old student. Joanne Leger Legault admits she had engaged in inappropriate relationships with not just one, but four male students. Police say their investigation found the 23-year-old former sub had several relationships with minors at the school. Anna Michelle Walters is in jail right now, charged with taking indecent liberties with a child by a person in a custodial or supervisory relationship and carnal knowledge. Alarming allegations against a Gilderland woman arrested today on charges of sexually abusing an 11-year-old. News 10's Taryn Fitzek is live at the Gilderland Police Station with the latest. Taryn? Police say they're not only investigating allegations that 55-year-old Carolyn Lorraine Wilson had inappropriate contact with an 11-year-old girl, but also possibly a 6-year-old boy. Your high teacher stands accused of paying a student a lot of money to have sex with her. The 15-year-old boy told police Melissa Andriani paid him between $14 and $1,500 after three sexual encounters at her home in June. Valin Bowers said nothing as she walked out of court today. She struck a deal with Davis County prosecutors pleading guilty to sex abuse charges instead of rape. This was in the best interest of the victims to convict somebody of two second degree felonies that puts her on the sex offender registration and could subject her to a long term in prison. Um, and as I understand it, the, the victims were okay with that situation. Bowers is one of two teachers at Bountiful Junior High now convicted of having a sexual relationship with the same student. 27-year-old Ashley Campbell, a kindergarten teacher at Montrose Christian, has now been charged with having a sexual relationship for more than a year with a Montrose Christian student who was 16 when the relationship began in the fall of 2010. The teacher did confess to the relationship. The plea lands a former Hillsborough County middle school teacher with 10 years probation. Tammy Clinton pled guilty today to lewd and lascivious conduct involving a 14-year-old student. A 22-year-old Maine woman is facing charges after police accused her of having sex with a teenager she met playing the video game Call of Duty. The then 14-year-old boy and Cassandra Grant, then 21 of Rockland, Maine, met in March 2011 while playing a PlayStation 3 game online, police said. The relationship escalated as they texted, met on webcam, and spoke on the phone. Police say Grant rendezvoused with the teenager last December and they had sex. According to the Connecticut Post, the relationship was uncovered by the boy's parents after the meeting and they reported it to police. A Houston woman is accused of sexually assaulting a young boy and at the same time, according to prosecutors, putting that young boy's life in danger. Eyewitness News reporter Kevin Quinn explains how. Kevin? Yeah, Lana, that boy says he is still scared, allegedly being exposed to HIV. He still can't fathom that someone he knows would supposedly expose him to something so dangerous. Shouldn't have to do it no more. We are not revealing this 12 year old boy's identity. She had unzipped my pants. He says he was sexually assaulted on Saturday inside the Southeast Houston home of someone he's known for years. I was telling her to move, move. I feel like she shouldn't do that to no child, and, and I feel like she shouldn't do that to me or others. 55 year old Deborah Flowers Haggerty was arrested and is now charged with aggravated sexual assault of a child. It's unthinkable what 20-year-old Tabitha Hollinsworth is accused of doing at this apartment complex on Aaron Drive in September. A 13-year-old boy said he was with another 15-year-old boy, along with Hollinsworth, who allegedly had sex with both boys. 
13-year-old told police that the 15-year-old wore a condom, but he didn't. The 13-year-old grandparents found out about the illegal sex when the boy got sick. The son was having trouble urinating and uh, sought medical help for the boy and found out that he had this uh, sexually transmitted disease. Chlamydia that police say he contracted from Hollinsworth. This Sunday school teacher accused of kidnapping, raping, and killing an eight-year-old playmate of her daughter pleaded guilty Monday to murder. 29-year-old Melissa Huckabee entered the plea in a San Joaquin County, California court. As part of the surprise deal, charges of rape and lewd conduct with a child were dropped. Huckabee could have faced the death penalty under the original charges. She faces a sentence of 25 years to life in prison without the possibility of parole and the death of Sandra Cantu. Her body was found in a suitcase that had been dropped at a pond a few miles from the mobile home park where the girl and Huckabee both lived. A female high school teacher has been arrested after police say she had a sexual relationship with a boy under 15. Police say 40-year-old Marie Johnson had several encounters with the boy between December of 2010 and May of 2011. She was the uh, teacher of the year several years ago at one Aiken County school. And now 38-year-old Tammy Key, that woman there of Graniteville, is in jail charged for sex crimes with a 14-year-old boy who was a student. Tuesday, a Medina County jury concluded that 35-year-old Kelly Kovic crossed that line, finding her guilty of sexual battery and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. According to arrest warrants, 37-year-old Lindell had sexual relations with a 15-year-old former student. The encounters happened numerous times over a period of six months. A Virginia Beach mother is charged with having sex with teenage boys. 37-year-old Leslie Losey is charged with two counts of taking indecent liberties with a minor and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Investigators say she was having sex with friends of her teenage son during sleepovers at her house. Here's the sheriff's office has a mound of evidence in this case, including... Everything from text messages to phone calls to a pair of the substitute teacher's underwear. Lisa Marinelli faces a single count of unlawful sexual activity with a minor. She bonded out of the Pasco County Jail late last night. Marinelli was a substitute teacher at Mitchell High School in Newport Ritchie. According to documents released today, one of the text messages she sent the teen said, quote, How about a quickie tomorrow afternoon? Another said, quote, You can meet me at home at 3. Real men only need 20 minutes. We will be alone because there is a field trip, unquote. Police say over the past six weeks, 41-year-old Nicole McMillan committed lewd acts with the victim on a number of occasions. She was arrested earlier this morning at her Irvine home. McMillan is a part-time aide in the Tustin School District and will be placed on administrative leave. Detectives believe there may be more potential victim. Police say 45-year-old Raquel Michaels is one of the people who gets a little hot and bothered by all the fur. An arrest affidavit states she thought it was, quote, ironic that the victim's mother saw her as a role model for her son when the whole time she was having sex with the teen. Texas Youth Commission investigators believe Thelma Miles had sex with a 14-year-old boy at least six different times. This court document says the teenager escaped from TYC custody last Wednesday, and that same day, Miles met him at a cell phone store. She immediately drove him to a hotel off Broadway Street, where they stayed and had sex numerous times. Kathleen Miller is an administrator for the village of Chicago Ridge. The Cook County State's Attorney's Office says Miller gave the boys liquor and marijuana before molesting them. The victims are ages, between the ages of 14 and 15 years old. This Southside parking lot sits less than a mile from Milwaukee Police District 6 headquarters. Officers didn't have to stray far to encounter 40-year-old MPS teacher Tammy Monty. According to police, she was found here in the back seat of her SUV around 2.30 Saturday morning with a 14-year-old boy, both without clothes from the waist down. Pleading guilty to having sexual contact with her four-year-old daughter and streaming video of it live. When she was first arrested, Andrea Ziza claimed she was actually trying to help catch online child sex predators. But later, prosecutors say she admitted to everything, having sexual contact with her four-year-old and broadcasting it live over the Internet. Your crimes are despicable. 
In my mind, you are far worse than any pedophile or sexual predator because you preyed on your own flesh and blood. Judge Richard Coretti sentenced Ziza to the previously agreed upon minimum of less than four Thank years in prison. The max is 20 years. For your own titillation and profit, you exposed your child to untold danger and emotional trauma. What kind of trouble? Uh, I got into some trouble with my girlfriend, Courtney. Like what? My mother put a petition out where we weren't supposed to be around each other because she didn't want us being around each other. But I wasn't living with her. She just put it out. Well, what did she allege in the petition? <laughs> in other words, for a mother to bring a petition against a child with whom she is not living, she would have to make some pretty serious allegations. Uh, she didn't make any allegations other than some... She doesn't like me being gay, for one. And for two, she didn't like the whole Courtney was with her husband's daughter and her husband's daughter. Right. And she was too young. She didn't like it at all. Do you know that Courtney is, is, uh, is with younger girls? Uh, yes. I've known Courtney all my life, basically. Courtney, though, has been with younger girls. Uh, she's only been with a few that I know, like one. Like how old? Uh, she's my age. No, she's a year and a half younger. She's 14. You know that's a crime. Well, the, no, Courtney was 17 and the girl... That's was... still a crime? Yes. Do you understand that a 17-year-old having sex with a 14-year-old is a crime? She's a pedophile. We're accustomed to thinking that pedophiles are dirty old men in raincoats. Pedophiles can be pretty young 17-year-old girls having sex with 14-year-old girls. Even this mother says she does not condone hitting anyone, but she says she just snapped. Snap when she says her friend tried to blame her little boy. And she also says if a neighbor had not been there to stop her, she doesn't know what would have happened next. And that's what triggered me. How are you going to try to flip it on my child? My son is five years old. He don't know nothing about nothing when it comes to no intercourse, inner nothing. He's five. He's excited about going to kindergarten. We'll call her Stacy, and it was her five-year-old son who was allegedly molested by 42-year-old Michelle Lester, a friend who had fallen on hard times, a friend she let move in with her family less than a week ago. Stacy, who was going to college, asked Michelle Lester to watch her children till she was done with classes, but when Stacy returned home, a neighbor told her something sexual may have happened between her five-year-old boy and Michelle Lester. Stacy confronted Michelle, and that's when we're told Michelle, who was five feet nine inches tall and weighs over 300 pounds, tried to blame it on Stacy's little boy. Ultimately, she said my son tried to molest her, and that's when I hit her. I knocked her clean on her back. There's no physical way that my son can take advantage of you and your 300, almost 400 pounds. And my son is the average size of a five-year-old. What do you do, grab a steak knife and say, give me the cookies? I mean, be for real. Police say Michelle Lester took off the boy's pants and fondled him. She's now under arrest facing a felony. One count of second-degree criminal sexual conduct. Disgusting case of child abuse in a Lee County courtroom. A Lee County mother admits she used her children to produce child porn. Lynn, Candace Miller walked into the courtroom today bound and shackled. Now she sobbed as the judge read off the list of charges, which include a parent sexually exploiting a minor for child porn. In October, investigators raided this Alva home. It's where Candace Miller says she sexually assaulted her young children. This is video of Miller from a previous court appearance. Investigators say they found more than 1,000 pornographic images on Miller's computer. Before Candace Miller is sentenced, the judge wants to take a look at her past to find out if she had any previous run-ins with the law. That evaluation will determine how harsh her sentence will be. Molly Jane Rowe faced a judge this morning on charges she sexually abused and murdered her boyfriend's baby. Miss Rowe, you've been arraigned on charge of first degree murder and aggravated rape of a child. It's a crime that happens often but rarely reported. We're talking about sex crimes against young boys. And as Fox News reporter Derricka Williams tells us, a Centronelle woman has now been arrested for rape. And investigators say this is a warning to parents to be on alert. At a time when he was supposed to be carefree, officials say a young boy had his innocence taken away. It robs them of their childhood. 
Assistant District Attorney Nikki Patterson says 34-year-old Tamara Rowell traumatized the child. She was arrested on two counts of rape. She was arrested on a charge that came out of the grand jury where we have an 11-year-old boy. Well, he's 14 years old now, but uh, there are allegations that she began having sexual relations with the child from the time that he was 11 until uh, the time that he was 14. The victim was no stranger to Rowell. Officials say she was a family friend and used that relationship to gain the little boy's trust. The overwhelming majority of cases involve people who have very close access to our children. Authorities say another child walked in on the sexual activity and reported it to an adult who went to law enforcement and the Child Advocacy Center. Patterson says she wants to bring awareness to the molestation of young boys. It happens to male children all the time. It is just much more difficult to get a male child to come forward. We've gotten really pretty good in society, I think, in getting the message out to young female victims that it's safe for them to report and that they are the victim, it's not their fault. We have not done quite as good a job with male victims. Patterson is hoping to shed light on the dynamics of child rape and wants all victims, including boys, to feel comfortable reaching out for help. <laughs> One teacher worked at Boiling Springs Elementary School. The other one worked at a preschool at a church. And tonight, both of those women are here awaiting an 8 o'clock bond hearing. As a parent, I would be absolutely livid if someone was doing this with my child. Sheriff Chuck Wright made it clear that he was angry with two women who, up until today, were teachers. Gentlemen, I need room to get her in the car, please. 44-year-old Audrey Grabarkowitz had nothing to say about the charges against her. 10 counts of contributing to the delinquency of a minor. 42-year-old Sarah Jane Lindsay wouldn't talk either. She's charged with one count of criminal sexual conduct with a minor, 11 to 14 years of age, and nine counts of contributing to the delinquency of a minor. The sheriff says the women had parties at their homes starting in July, where the teen victims were given alcohol and marijuana and were also involved in sex with the women. 35-year-old Cherish Arroyo admitted to having sex with a victim on three or four occasions between April and July of this year, and that the sexual encounters took place at her home when her husband was away. The married mother of two cited loneliness as the reason for her crime. It was learned through text messages that the two had been having a relationship, and the investigation revealed that it had been about going on for about a year. 27-year-old Tina Maria Motto was arrested Friday, denied bail, and remains in custody. Police arrested 31-year-old Andrea Billingsley, who was a part-time teacher's aide for the in-school suspension program. She was let go because funding ran out for her position. Police say at the end of the school year, Billingsley showed the teens sexually explicit material, then engaged in sex acts with them at school. Disturbing allegations against a 19-year-old girl who is accused of committing a sex crime with a little boy she was babysitting. That little boy, by the way, was only three years old at the time. And she's accused of molesting a three-year-old boy that she was babysitting last year. Amber Deshae Bowie was just 19 years old when the boy she was babysitting says she sexually assaulted him. Today, Bowie's mother told Eyewitness News she can't believe the charges. She didn't do nothing. How could this be going so far? What? A court document reveals that Bowie is accused of taking the then three-year-old boy into the bathroom of his grandmother's house on June 22nd last year, undressing, then sexually assaulting him. 24-year-old Sarah Jane Bridges was arrested Friday evening. She faces several charges, including rape, sodomy, and sex abuse, all involving a middle school student. A counselor at a Bullock County juvenile facility is behind bars tonight, accused of having sex with one of the teenage boys there. 27-year-old Brooke Briscoe was arrested at her Oklahoma home this morning. 36-year-old Bethany Dyer is accused of using her position as a teacher at Gibson County High School to have sex with a 17-year-old male student. The pair allegedly had sex three times between May 2009 and October 2010. 
34-year-old Kimberly Sauto of North Ridgeville is a dance instructor, married and a mother of two. This afternoon, a jury found her guilty of unlawful sexual conduct with a minor. She had sex with one of her tap dance students, a 15-year-old boy. Tara Hodges picked the 14-year-old boy up on the evening of June 6th. She then drove him back to her apartment here, where the two allegedly smoked marijuana. From there, according to the arrest affidavit, the former Brazos Middle School teacher and the 14-year-old boy allegedly had sex. Boynton Beach police are charging a 32-year-old woman with stalking and having sex with a 16-year-old girl. They say Angela Jackson maintained a relationship with the victim for about six months. Investigators say she even videotaped at least one sexual encounter. Once the victim broke off the relationship, they say she tried to use the video to threaten the victim. A Pinellas County teacher has been arrested for having sex with a student. Deputies say Allison Perry Jarvis is a third grade teacher at Southern Oaks Elementary School on Walsingham Road in Largo. Deputies say Perry Jarvis began having a sexual relationship with a 16-year-old student more than two years ago. You are right. This is a tough story, really, for anyone to hear. Ashley Jessup is charged with raping a child under the age of 13. In fact, police believe she raped her infant son. Uh, next is Ashley Jessup. Note the defendant has exercised constitutional right to remain silent. Ashley Jessup stayed silent during her court arraignment one day after being arrested and charged with raping her 10-month-old son. Polk deputies say Danielle Jones will spend the first days of her summer break behind bars. The 32-year-old Stambaugh middle school teacher is under arrest, accused of having sex with four teenage boys between the ages of 14 and 16, two of which were former students. 31-year-old Michelle Kemp was arrested back in August 2009 for having sex with a 15-year-old. Jennifer Robin Kennedy was arrested by the Edgefield County Sheriff's Office. She's accused of improper acts with a 14-year-old boy. Investigators say Kennedy is charged with single count of criminal sexual conduct. We've just learned new exclusive information about a woman accused of a sex crime against a child. Maureen Kimwelly is charged with rape of a child less than 14 years old and indecent liberties with a child. She is being held on a $100,000 bond and has to surrender her passport because she's a native of Kenya. Pleading guilty to two counts of lewd and lascivious behavior as part of her plea agreement. Now Fox News correspondent Orlando Salinas has more for us live from Miami. Hi Orly. Hey, Martha, this one-time model turned teacher and now felon has, as you said just a second ago, reached a plea deal in Tampa and will avoid any kind of jail time at all. We're talking about 25-year-old Deb Lefebvre, pled guilty to two counts of lewd and lascivious behavior, battery on a child under 16, after having sex with a 14-year-old middle school boy at least five times inside a portable classroom, at least once inside her SUV. Lefebvre arrested back in June of 2004, 17 months ago. Her deal means that she'll serve three years house arrest, basically, has to attend required meetings. Checking with a court-appointed officer, her travel will be limited, and after successfully serving that community control, she'll be on probation for seven years. Megan Mantooth, a math teacher at Burgaw Middle School, was suspended and charged with cyber stalking after reportedly sending hundreds of inappropriate text messages to a 13-year-old boy. A Pennsylvania woman is in jail tonight accused of driving across the country to have sex with a tri-state minor. And as Fox 7's Lauren Jones tells us, that minor was a 14-year-old girl from Wayne County. Their relationship started with the click of a mouse. And it was that relationship with a 14-year-old girl that landed 33-year-old Catherine Miller of Pennsylvania behind bars. Almost everyone on Vista Ridge High School campus knew about the arrest of freshman English teacher, 36-year-old Rainley Reynolds Montoya. Deputies charged her with improper relationship between an educator and a student. The Randall County District Attorney's Office says 34-year-old Julianne Moore was indicted by a grand jury Wednesday. Moore is accused of sending explicit text messages to several 15-year-old Amarillo High boys, then having sex with one of them. Destiny Munoz is a teacher and dance coach at Jefferson. She was arrested late last night after a parent contacted police and told them her daughter stated that Munoz was having relations with an 18-year-old male student. 
Amy Neely sits in the St. Lucie County Jail facing some serious charges. Port St. Lucie police arrested her this weekend for having sex with a minor. It began Saturday night in this parking lot at Centennial High School in Port St. Lucie. Police say Neely was with a 16-year-old exchange student who lives with her and her husband. They were having uh, sexual relations when the, the husband showed up. But first, a warning to you. The details of this story are graphic and they are disturbing. Today, we are learning that more charges are likely against the Grant County mother accused of raping her own children and a two-week-old infant she was babysitting live on a webcam. Pamela Ortega told police she performed sex acts on these children. This is the mother now charged with child rape of her own children, accused of performing sex acts on her eight-year-old daughter and six-year-old son, as well as a two-week-old infant she was babysitting. A former middle school teacher remains on the loose tonight, wanted by authorities for having sex with a teenage student. The Bell County Sheriff's Office says 31-year-old Troy ISD teacher Casey Pomeranke admitted to having sex multiple times with a 14-year-old boy. A College Station woman accused of crossing the line in her relationship with a teenage boy is now facing two counts of sexual assault of a child. 42-year-old Elizabeth Price was arrested Friday. Police say a friendship between Price and her friend's son turned sexual. Teacher here, Janelle Ramirez, was arrested for having sex with a male student. Oh, my goodness. A church school teacher accused of having a sexual affair with a student. 32-year-old Tara Rawlings is accused of having sex with a then 15-year-old boy. Not guilty. That's the plea from 28-year-old Tiffany Robinson in court today. The school secretary at Collins K-8 had her arraignment today. The grand jury indicted her on six charges, including enticing a child, child molestation, and sexual assault. She's accused of having sex with a 15-year-old boy from that school on two occasions. Pressure from our Sunday night search for sex offender segment has led to the capture of another wanted offender. The U.S. Marshal's office says 30-year-old Michelle Rubal turned herself into the Marshal's the day after Christmas. They say she was feeling the heat from Marshal's and after being featured on Eyewitness News 4 about a month ago. Sheriff's officials say Rubal is convicted of criminal sexual penetration. Her victim, a 15-year-old boy. Washington County School Police Chief Mike Mirrors confirms they believe special education teacher Beth Shepard had sex with at least two students. Gabby, investigators were told that this happened on a front porch of all places. The woman is also accused of having sex with a 17-year-old, but because he is of age, there are no charges. 26-year-old Tamara Shoemaker is now charged with two counts of criminal sexual conduct. 24-year-old Natasha Saizo, a first-year social studies teacher and swimming coach at Norfolk's Granby High School, has been arrested for allegedly using her cell phone to send illicit text messages and pictures of herself to students there. Saizo has been charged with two counts of indecent liberties and two counts of using a communication device to facilitate crimes against children. Today, a judge set bond at $20,000 for Crystal Smith, a 21-year-old accused of making a young relative participate in child porn. Crystal Smith disappeared. Detectives say she stayed on the run until three weeks ago when officers in Grays Harbor County, Washington pulled her over during a traffic stop and discovered she was wanted in Kings Mountain, accused of making a young family member participate in child porn. What do you say to your students, Mrs. Spack, that are so upset right now? Hiding under that coat, Mary Jo Spack. After being locked up, the Freedom High School teacher stayed silent and hidden. But this 45-year-old student have plenty to say. Why would she do it? She had a good record and everything. Everybody liked her. I was coming out of class. I saw her walking with these police, like, with her head down, and she had her hands cuffed up. I was like, whoa, what's going on? They're like, oh, you didn't hear? She slept with one of our students. Tampa police tell me last Friday night, Spack, the honors English teacher, met a 17 and 18 year old at a liquor store, then drove them to a Howard Johnson's motel for a party that included booze and sex. 
The two teens text three other students who also showed up at the motel. Officers say the 17-year-old student told them during the party he had sex with SPAC in the shower. The other students claim they heard the two having sex and saw teacher and student walk out soaking wet. The 17-year-old bragged about it Monday and word spread like wildfire. Now SPAC is charged with having unlawful sex with a minor and contributing to the delinquency of two minors. For four years at Deer Creek Intermediate School in St. Francis, 26-year-old Kelly Sweet has taught eighth grade math and coached girls volleyball. State of Wisconsin versus Kelly Sweet. But prosecutors say she got way too close with a 14-year-old boy, a student at the school. Oh, it was a huge shock. Uh, it would be with any one of our staff people. It was um, very upsetting. School officials learned of the sexual assault allegations from police last Monday and immediately suspended Sweet. The boy told police he was at Sweet's downtown Milwaukee apartment earlier this month watching a movie with her on the couch when he says Sweet began to kiss him and it led to sexual contact.